Yo, what's going on guys? It is JD here back with another episode of the No Money Spent Road to Glory. And today we've got a couple of things to do as usual and then we're also going to get into a game today. We're going to play a game of Domination to check out that Ralph LaFrentz or Rafe LaFrentz, however you want to pronounce his name. Uh, we're going to see how I'm going about evolving him because obviously he needs a lot of rebounds and a lot of three-pointers at his Amethyst level or to get to that Amethyst level. So we'll take a look at that today. Sadly, in the agenda and the today in my team section, they're pretty lackluster. 300 my team points for every domination win in two hour slots. Now, if you play flat out, you can get through four games of domination in two hours. So you're earning a bonus 1,200 MT. Like that is really, really uh, lackluster to say the least. Um, but anyway, moving on, we don't have any new moment challenges. So nothing to do there today. Um, so like I said, that is why we're going to go into a game of domination. So if we come down to him, here we go, there he is. So Ralph France, we're nearly halfway on the three pointers made, which is fantastic. Rebounds, we've got 167, and that is all in 10 games. So he's averaging about 10 three pointers a game and about 16 boards per game, which isn't too bad. Um, so we should be able to get him done uh, way before those 50 games, which is obviously uh, a big bonus. Now we are using Steve Kerr in the squad as well. So he's scored uh, 25 three pointers, so a tenth of the way there on his card. And we also have Cliff Robinson in the squad as well. Uh, and he grabs the occasional rebound because obviously I'm not trying to do anything with him. I am trying to do everything through this Ralph LaFrance card. So that is the squad we're going to use today and we shall win easily and it won't be a struggle at all. Uh, and I will show you guys how I go about getting all of the three pointers with LaFrance. We've got a couple of packs open up today. So we've got two Celtics ones, obviously from a domination game that I played earlier today. And then we've got a pack from the daily login today, which is a KG pack. So hopefully... We can get something decent out of that. It'd be really nice if we did because our pack luck lately has been pretty damn awful. So send that contract to the auctions and then let's go ahead and open this pack. I don't think we've got anything good out of these KG packs um, and we've had quite a few of them. And uh, again, we're not going to get anything. we we'll get a Terry Porter actually. Uh, and last time we sold him for 3,000 MT, I believe. Let's go ahead and take a look. Terry Porter down at the Emerald level and he is still selling for around 3,000 MT. So you know what? I'll take it. It's not too bad. Uh, and we also have quite a few things to sell or to sell that have sold. So all of those silvers that didn't sell have now gone ahead and sold. And we sold a Trevor Reza for 6k. I managed to buy two of them for 4,500 MT by mistake. Obviously, I only needed one. Uh, we ended up getting two, so I managed to flip that one for a bit of profit, which is really nice. Um, and then as we finish up these, we'll go over to my auctions. And you see I've got Mike Muscala in there as well. And I think it's someone else. So Ilyasova still hasn't sold yet. Like, god damn, this guy just won't shift. And we've got a Muscala there for 10k, which will hopefully sell, because, uh, yeah, he's an expensive boy. Moving into the collection now, and we are really, really close to getting everything done. So we need two players from the Heat, uh, and this Kezi Okpala guy, uh, yeah, he ain't no joke. He is expensive. He's like 8, 9k. Don't really want to pay that. And the same for Tyler Hero uh, again, or Hero, however you want to say his name. Uh, yeah, very expensive. The Magic we have got done, so we can lock them in. Michael Carter-Williams was the last guy, and we picked him up for 4,500 MT. Uh, Justin Holiday here, again, really, really expensive. Only one of them up with a buy and hour price, so we're not going to pick him up just yet. And then Matt Thomas from the Raptors, again, ridiculously expensive. 8k for him, I'm just not going to pay that. Even though there's so many of him up in auction, his price is still ridiculously high. For the Jazz, we only need two now. We need Gorgeous Nyang, uh, who's coming in at, again, like 9k. Like, it's so expensive. Uh, I don't want to pay it. Royce O'Neal, again, another one who's really expensive. But we have done the Kings now, so we can lock them in. Who was the last player out of this? Uh, it was that Trevor Ariza card. So, yeah, we managed to pick him up for a decent price. Nuggets, we still need three players. But the Thunder, we have gone ahead and completed. So, Muscala, we got for 8k. Terrence Ferguson was 10k. So, it's 18k between these two. But then these two were 6k apiece. So, about 30k for the four silvers. Uh, and then, of course, discard value for all of the other guys. So, it's about 35k, which isn't too bad for the most expensive set, like, by far. Um, so, I'm more than happy locking that in. And now, we are only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're only 7 silver cards away from completing the 2019 collection, which is fantastic. And that gives us, of course, enough tokens to go ahead and pick up another diamond card from the reward board. Uh, someone in the comments did say to pick up Jerry Lucas, so let's take a look at him. Two Hall of Fame badges, he's only got 10, no it's not, that's uh, 12 badges in total, quick maths right there. Uh, Hall of Fame rebound chaser is nice, catch shoots good, brick wall, uh, but he just doesn't seem to have that many compared to other players. But in terms of his stats, uh, decent, very well decent, very good post moves, great three-pointer, great mid-range, 
decent dunking-ish. Uh, not the best defensively. Great rebounding, though, and really, really slow. And at 6'8", at the power forward position, I think that is a hard swerve, not going to lie. Um, so who are we looking at today? Was there anyone really? Tim Hardaway I've had to recommend him to me before. 28 gold badges, 2 silver, 1 Hall of Fame. That is what you want to see. You don't want to be seeing 12 badges on a diamond card. That is just not impressive. Contact finisher, that's nice. Slithery finisher, giant slayer. Quick first step, stop and go. All right, I think we're going to pick this guy up. He doesn't have steady shooter, which instantly makes me want to get him. Uh, decent open shot three, decent mid-range, amazing ball handling, great defense as well, and amazing speed. Tim Hardaway, welcome to the squad. You look like an absolute monster. So we'll happily add him into the squad. Of course, we did only pick up uh, another point guard. We picked up Bob Cousy from the reward board the other day. So we'll put in... Uh, I actually kind of want that Tim Hardaway at the backup power forward, uh, backup power forward at the backup point guard position. Uh, but yeah, between him and Bob Cousy, we'll have to try him out and see who we think is better. But now we only need one more player, and we've got a full starting lineup uh, and reserves as well of diamond cards, which is ridiculous. Uh, so we've got another diamond card. We've got a couple more uniforms. We've got this Terry Porter, which we can sell, uh, and then we've got a couple of other things here to sell. So we get rid of this Bucks away jersey that should sell for about a thousand, hopefully. And then we've got a couple of shoes which we can quick sell. And that puts us back up to close to 1,000. 1,000. Oh my god, as if. <laughs> Imagine being at 1,000 MT. Couldn't be me. Uh, puts us back nearly at 100,000, which is great. We've got one bid here on Tory Craig. Uh, chances are we won't get him for 3,100. So I might just bump this up to 3,500 around that. Uh, and we'll see what we get from that. Like I said, hopefully this Mascala and Ilya Sova sell. And then we'll put this Terry Porter up. For about 2.5k, I think he should sell for that amount. So, let's go ahead and get into a game of Historic Domination. So, as you can see here, my uh, little conferences are all over the place. We've got some in the Central done, some in the Atlantic done. And today, we will jump back into the uh, Central Division. And we'll go with the Cavs, because uh, their bigs are pretty horrendous. Drew Gooden and Il Gorskis. Is that who I wanted to go with? I think I picked out a team that was uh, going to be the easiest to play against. Just to really showcase how easy it is with... This Ralph LaFrance to get a load of points. Uh, I don't think it's them. Yeah, I think it was the Cavs, to be fair. Uh, and this Bucks team has a picked up with Kareem, which we are going to hard swerve. So let's go into this one against LeBron and Ilgorskis. And we'll see what we can do with LaFrance. So obviously, you always want to have LaFrance on the worst defender out of the two. At either the power forward or the centre position. So that's two of them. Drew Gooden or Ilgorskis. Obviously, we want to have him being guarded by Drew Gooden. That should make our lives a little bit easier. Um, and then straight away, we are going to go into the settings and apply a couple of things that I think have definitely helped me uh, in getting him right. So defensively, we want to go tight, tight over on the screens, over on the screens, because we are going to be off-balling, because we need those rebounds with Rafa France, so we are going to be needing to control him all the time. Now we come down here and we go to pace and space. So instead of that seven seconds offense, go to pace and space. Uh, as you can see there, positives, increase three-point opportunities, and that is all that we care about. Uh, you can see that Jordan McRae doesn't like it, but it doesn't matter. We don't care about him. The other four guys, we all need, or they all need three-pointers. So if we take a three with anyone other than Jordan McRae, that is a massive dub for us and for our Evo. So that is what we want to do on the offensive end and in terms of the settings. Now you can do that. Let's play the quick through STS. Uh, but of course, that's only for two-pointers. So we will get onto that after we've got all of the three-pointers done. Uh, with all of these players, then we'll start running that play. But for now, we're going to have to try and focus, if I can get my words out, we're going to try and focus on the three-pointers. So let's get into this. So defensively, like I said, we want to be uh, on Ralph LaFrance, so we want to be on triangle, so crash of glass. Uh, we actually don't want crash of glass. We actually want to be running in transition. And then on the offensive end, we want to go for four out, one in. We want to go for push the pace, and we want to go crash the offensive glass, just in case he's down there. And then every possession, we are going to be, pretty much every possession, we're going to be calling for a pick and fade from Ralph LaFrance. Hopefully the ball gets to him. It does. It's not the best shot, and Cliff Robinson is there for a board, which is fantastic. We kind of messed up that release, though, which is a little bit annoying, but it does mean we can change this to run in transition, because we don't want anybody else... Under the rim, we only want LaFrance under there. Obviously, Cliff, Cliff Robinson needs rebounds as well. So if he does steal a couple, it's not the end of the world, which is why I have him in this squad, because at the end of the day, the ball just lands where it does sometimes. Uh, that is horrendous. But as we can see here, Steve Kerr has been left pretty much wide open. He definitely was wide open there, but he took a step inwards for some reason, uh, which is a little bit dead. Larry Hughes is going to come in and he's going to get that layup to go. Um, all right. Of course, this is a game where things aren't going to run out smoothly. 
Um, but yeah, sometimes you can do this. Uh, there you go. They've just left France wide open. We're going to get a perfect release, and it's going to go in for the first three of the game. Now, sadly, they do leave that Jordan McRae open quite a lot of the time, uh, which is, of course, completely irrelevant for us. We don't really want him on the floor. So if you had a full squad of Evos, that'd be even better for you uh, because then whoever is open, you know you can trust just to take the shot. So again, they've left Steve Kerr open this time. So we'll take that three and we'll green light that three. And it really is this easy throughout the entirety of the game. So you're either going to get threes with uh, Steve Kerr, Cliff Robinson, or, of course, La France. You're not going to get him with Mahmood because... A lot of the time I'm bringing him down and using him as the primary ball handler because he does have gold floor general and gold floor uh, and floor dimer and gold dimer as well. We're going to get the shot there. That's fine. And there we go. That's the first rebound of the game for LaFrance. So doing this method, I've been averaging, uh, as you saw by the stats, about 10 threes per game and about 20 rebounds, something around that. We'll take a mid-range there just to try and get him going. Obviously, if you get him hot, hot, if you get him heated up, uh, is a massive advantage as a bad shot by LeBron, but only 8% cover, god damn. Um, but at the end of the games, you are going to be coming out shooting about 10 for 25, something like that. Um, his steady shooter badge on gold is uh, a massive pain. They've left Steve Kerr open again. He's also got steady shooter, which means he does miss wide open, and it does get very frustrating, um, and it does just decrease the amount you can green their shots as well. So if you're missing shots, chances are uh, your shooters have that badge, and that is one of the reasons why. So you really got to be patient if you are getting loads of open shots and you're bricking them all. Uh, yeah, that's why. So yeah, you do come out of the game shooting around 10 out of 25 attempts on threes, which is annoying, but it's still 10 more threes and we only need 100 more. So 10 more games, shooting 10 threes a game, and then we can just focus on two pointers. And that means, of course, she's using that quick through STS play as a bad shot. Sadly, we're not on the boards, but there we go. Cliff Robinson gets his second board of the game. And of course, that is fine by me. Now, LaFrentz hasn't actually screened anyone, but like I said, he's got that steady shooter badge, so it means that, uh, yeah, wide open, he's going to brick. I thought that would count as a contest, so I was happy to take that shot because I thought he might actually um, make that one. But yeah, wide open, chances are he's going to brick it. That's another awful shot, and LaFrentz gets the board. So this is what it's going to be like. It's going to be frantic throughout the entire game. You are going to be uh, crashing the boards on the defensive end with LaFrentz and coming down again. They've left Jordan McRae open. Hopefully, LeBron will go over to him. He didn't. Uh, and we jack up a three with a bad release, but it still goes in. It had a little bit of contest, and again, it's all down to that steady shooter badge, um, which is so annoying. Like, it's just so dumb. Like, why would you penalise shooters for being open? It makes absolutely no sense. But sadly, it's in the game, so we've got to deal with it. LeBron is probably going to take that shot. He's actually not. He's passed it off, uh, and that's going to be a foul, annoyingly. So we'll try this with Steve Kerr right now, um, just to see if we can get him going. Well, I was going to say to see if we can get him open, but... Um, Obviously, we need Mahmoud Abdul to get his threes anyway, so it doesn't really matter who you use as the screener uh, or as the uh, pick-and-roll person. Um, I prefer to use Mahmoud just because I think he's a little bit quicker than Steve Kerr. Well, he definitely is at this stage of his Evo. Steve Kerr definitely goes up to be quicker when he becomes an Amethyst, and that is just not a pick-and-fade, is it? That's <laughs> just It's just not. Are we going to get back for the block? No, we are not. So doing this method, most of the time, you are just going to get the win pretty easily, and you don't actually have to play any proper offense you can just keep jacking up these threes and just praying they would go but i mean look at these screens what is this from lafrance i do not understand he's hit that one um, but his pick and fades have just been horrendous and you really do have to get used to it and really have your patience hat on because a lot of the time they will do dumb shit a lot of the time they'll start rolling to the rim instead of fading even when you click on a pick and fade so yeah, you've got to be really patient. They're going to go inside with Ilgorskis right now. Again, that should probably have been a three seconds. We're going to get the board. No, we're not. A little bit annoying. Rebounds are going to be the toughest thing to get with this LaFrance card. That is a bad shot. Give us that one. And that is going to be the end of the first quarter. So 15 points up by one. Like I said, it doesn't really matter about winning. You're going to win at the end of the day. And if you're not, you can really turn it up in the fourth quarter and just use that Nets play quick through SCS. We might have a little demonstration of it at the end of this game and just show how easy it is. And to show also that you can assign it to different players. So by default, uh, if you have it on your point guard and you call it with your point guard, the shooting guard will take the pass and the point guard will take it in. But if you do it with the shooting guard, then the point guard will give you the screen or give you the pass uh, and then be on his way. So there is a way to make it so you can either have your small forwards doing it, you can have your power forwards, or you can have your centres uh, doing that play, which is, of course, massive. So again, they've left Jordan McRae open, they've kind of rotated in on it, and LaFrentz is going to brick a slightly early full white, which, again, you're going to get loads of them. It is going to be frustrating, it is going to be annoying, 
Um, but just know that for as many as you miss, you're going to make a few of them. Um, and it is, you're just making them tea as you go. That's what you got to be thinking. You've got to be remembering that you're doing this to get a good amount of MT, which you are going to get because this LaFrance card is still selling for around the 80, 90K at its amethyst level, I believe. Uh, so we're going to get the screen there. Again, LaFrance is kind of, well, he's kind of rolled, uh, which is a little bit annoying, but we will take the two points. At the end of the day, he does need like another thousand points or something crazy like that. Um, so yeah, if we're going to get a free bucket with him, we're going to take it. So bad shot. One of our guys should get the balls. He hasn't. We jumped a little bit too early. And we're going to give away the foul. So that is a little bit annoying. So while he is taking that free throw, I will show you guys how to do it. So play selection. We want to remove all of these. Uh, and then you want to put quick through STS on this slot right here. Because that is going to be your L1 button. So you can just click L1 and then tap it again. So you don't have to press any other button. Now, if you're on here, you want to press triangle. And then, as you can see, you can select anyone to run this play. So if I click on the friends, he is now going to be the one who starts the play, who passes the ball off, and then runs to the hoop. So as you can see by their little uh, diagram there, he's going to be the PG in that scenario. So he's going to pass, and then he's going to run straight to the rim. And that is going to get him wide open every single time down. So it might even be worth just doing that play a couple of times uh, to get him he heated up, to get him warm, um, and then start jacking the threes when he's got his takeover. Um, but I think with dunks, it takes quite a bit longer uh, to get him going. As you can see, there is about halfway to his takeover at the moment. So we will take a couple more threes with him. Um, actually, Steve Kerr's wide open. He's got the steady shooter badge. So it always makes me nervous when he uh, doesn't green it. But he's actually three for three this game, which is pretty nice. And um, that's how we've been evoing him. It's been slow. Like I said, I haven't really been shooting with him at all. But he needs 253s and 1,000 points. So there's no real point in taking two pointers with him. Might as well just jack up loads of threes. Uh, and that is another rebound for LaFrentz. Uh, jack up loads of threes. And then once he's done all of those, we're probably only going to need another like 100 or 200 points. LaFrentz, what are you doing, my friend? Uh, again, they've come off uh, McRae, which is annoying. But it's got us wide open. And again, we are going to brick. Again, <laughs> it's frustrating. Uh, he's only got 11 points at this stage, which is pretty embarrassing. Uh, but he does have quite a few rebounds. Uh, and Mahmoud's coming in with seven assists. So again, if you need someone for assists, this is the perfect way to do it. So we needed 50 with Mahmoud. Uh, and that really went in about two games, I think. It was so, so easy. So here they haven't come off Steve Kerr. So it gets us a wide open look with LaFrance. It's a full white. It's a perfect release. But that badge just kills it. Like, if he didn't have that badge, it would probably have been green. Uh, probably would have gone in. I did go through the stats of that badge yesterday. So if you missed that, check it out. Um, yeah, I went through the percentages that it makes the uh, open shots drop by. Uh, and it is quite a lot. And it is really frustrating. So I've left him open again. It's another full white. And he's going to hit this one. It's very hit and miss though. And it is very frustrating. For the next couple of possessions, we will go ahead and use this quick through SCS play. Uh, just to show you guys exactly what it is. You press L1 once, press it twice. And then LaFrance is going to ask for the ball. You go to this spot right here. Pass it off to your point guard, and then he's going to roll straight to the rim for a wide open bucket every single time down. Uh, so yeah, if you need points, that's the easiest way to do it. The CPU do not adjust. They might start double teaming uh, whoever is passing the ball off, but you can usually get the pass away way before the double teams actually come over and been effective. So that's a really good way of doing it. Um, and they won't start double teaming the friends on the opening or on the entry pass. They won't start doing that. Oh, we get a steal there. Very nice indeed. And now we've got his takeover. Uh, he should be hitting threes at a higher rate. But again, you do miss some on the takeover. And it is really frustrating. And there we go. Slightly early. It was a full white. 16% contested, which shouldn't actually matter to someone with that badge. Um, and then Cliff Robinson is going to tear down the rebound there. You'd love to see that. We probably could have taken that three with Mahmood. Definitely should have done, but I've only taken one with three with him before. So I don't actually know his release too well. Uh, again, I don't mind taking this contested because we will get our first green light of the game. Or it feels like the first green light of the game is about damn time. Uh, and it takes him having his takeover to actually get it. But we've got a decent stat line coming up to the half. 20 points, six rebounds. It's about on average, like I said. About 40 and 20 is what I've been averaging. Uh, rebounds are very hit and miss, so it depends how many uh, the opponents... Or, well, it depends how many shots they miss, obviously, but it depends how many your teammates steal from you. So we'll go for another three because he has just hit a green light. Hopefully we can hit a couple in a row. Uh, Cliff Robinson's actually open, and then LaFrance is open, but he's moved back in. 
But we've got that open there. We go only 4% covered, but again, he's going to brick it. Oh, my God. Oh, this is what you have to go through every game down. Uh, and that is why this card is so expensive because uh, not many people want to do this grind. And I really don't blame them because it is very, very frustrating. So we come to the end of the first half right here. Let's try and get another one to go. He's hit the screen nicely. They've come over on him. But again, that is going to be a green light. 28% covered. And there we go. That is the steady shooter badge helping out on the offensive end uh, in terms of contested shots. He actually boosts that, boosts the percentage of hitting them anyway. Um, but of course, I'd much rather have a player who could actually hit his open shots. Mahmood for three, he green lights his first shot. There we go, that's nice. So that is why I've got four Evos in the squad. They're all going to chip in and hit threes, apart from Cliff Robinson at the moment, because uh, yeah, I don't really fuck with his release, not going to lie. It's so slow. Uh, and in the corner, he always seems to have his toe on the line, which is really annoying. That's another full white, and it is another full brick from... <laughs> The friends. Annoying and uh, end of the first half. So we're winning comfortably. Like, off falling on defence does make it really, really easy. And on the offensive end, just pick and fades all to your heart's content. But you will end up with shooting stats like this. 50% from three. Uh, and on wide open shots, that is a little bit demotivating. Uh, but it's what you've got to do, sadly. So I'll catch you guys at the end of this video. I've shown you pretty much everything now. Uh, not at the end of the video. At the end of this game. And we'll see how many points I can drop with this card. Alright guys, so we're coming to the end of the third quarter right here. Uh, there's actually something super important that I forgot to mention. So we'll take this three with the friends and then I will talk to you guys about it. Well actually, uh, what are you doing Steve Kerr? Why are you not still standing open? He's left us open though at the three point line. Uh, but we're going to brick it and that is going to be because... Uh, I haven't taken any timeouts yet, and as you can see here, energy is down at 59. Now, how much does that affect him? Well, it really does. This three-pointer is not a 91 anymore. Uh, it should be way, way down. I don't know why it's boosted. It usually shows like 80 or 81, something like that. Uh, if we have a look at Steve Kerr, his three-pointer is still fine. His three-pointer is still fine. Uh, his has gone down a little bit, um, but yeah, energy is a big problem. Stamina is a big problem, of course, because we're only going to play these guys throughout the entirety of the game. Let's get a stop there. Uh, let's try and get the board. We haven't managed to get it. Uh, definitely looks like a three seconds, and we are jumping down there uh, and getting no joy from it. So now we're going to take all of our time out. So you make sure to take them all out before the end of the third quarter, because after going to that fourth quarter, it only lets you carry over four, so you would lose uh, the remaining three that you had from the start. So it's definitely worth... Uh, I usually just take all eight of them at this same point right here, just to make sure I'm really fresh going into that fourth quarter and we can hit as many shots as is possible because even though it shows 91 stamina definitely plays a big part this year uh, you can of course run subs you can have other evo players coming off the bench that'd probably be the smart thing to do um, but for me i'm just trying to get these guys done so i want to make sure they're getting as many minutes as is possible so there we go we're taking all of our timeouts now and that brings everyone up to about the 80 ish uh, on the energy level which is of course great now the front is back so we're gonna have to take a pick and fade with cliff robinson right here uh, we've got him open. It is a full white, but it is contested, so he is going to break that one. Uh, and that was his first three of the game, because that release is horrendous. So we're going to the fourth with everyone nice and fresh, and we should be able to rain down quite a few more threes. All right, guys, so we're down to the last minute in this game. Uh, and as I said at the start, we averaged like 40 and 20, and we're not far off that. 39 and 16, soon to be 17. No, nope, Cliff Robinson wants to steal that one, but he's got five rebounds for himself, which again isn't bad. He needs like 200 rebounds, I think, for his... Evo, so it's not bad, but here we go. Ralph LaFrentz uh, has now gone to start rolling instead of fading, even when you call for the pick and fade, so that's frustrating. But at the end of the day, he still does need points, so you might as well take it inside. He's got three blocks in this game, so he's actually been a bit of a monster on the defensive end from that powerful position as well. Um, but that is, of course, because we are controlling him, so we are making sure he's in the right place at the right time. His stamina is not too bad come the end of the game. Cliff Robinson really does struggle because he does not have good stamina at all. Uh, now, on the defensive end, you want to be able to goad them into taking shots because you want them to take as many shots as is possible. So we get another block down there, but we don't get the rebound, sadly. So that's a little bit annoying. He's actually really close to getting another takeover. So let's see if we can get that before the end of the game. It's only 6% covered, but he is going to brick it. Uh, and that is going to be the end of this one. So 41 points, 16 rebounds. And we will go to the box score to see just how many threes he managed to put up and how many he actually managed to get down. Because uh, yeah, I don't think we shot a very good percentage in this game, that's for sure. It feels like he was breaking everything. There should be another rebound for us. It's actually not. How and how? How does he not grab that then? Don't know. But it's going to be 16 rebounds at the end of this, which isn't bad. Staying on pace on our average. Uh, and then let's take a look at the box score right here. So, LaFrance coming in, 9 of 25. I said at the start of the video, he shoots like 10 of 25. So, 
I was pretty damn close. Uh, and then 14 of 33 from the field. We got the four blocks, 16 boards, and 41 points in, of course, the 21 minutes, which is the entire game. So it's a long, long grind. Oh, yeah, we got the domination bonus, 300 MT. What a result. Um, it is such a long grind. You know, he needs 200 three pointers, I think. So straight away, you're looking at 20 games of hitting 10 threes, which is quite, it's, it's not easy. It's a struggle, uh, especially with the frustration levels that missing so many open shots brings. Uh, but yeah, we'll take a look at his price in the auction house right now just to double check that it is still pretty high Because if it isn't um, I might just well I'm not gonna sell him now But I definitely would advise against trying to get him from a ruby to an amethyst We're about halfway now I want to say um, to him maybe even a bit more uh, Because the rest of the points will come super easy when we do that quick through STS play That'll be nice and simple, but it's just these three pointers which are a uh, a bit of a problem. We're going to get some tokens. We're going to get six tokens for that conference, which is going to show, or for that division, sorry, which it shows right there, which is nice. Uh, so, yeah, we should get plenty more tokens when you complete these two conferences or divisions. Why do I keep saying conferences? I don't know. Uh, one thing sold, Terry Porter. He's gone for 2,500 MT. That's not bad. And let's come down here and take a look at LaFrance. So, he's over 100 threes now. He's at 105, 183 rebounds and 392 points. So, the points will easily catch up. Playing games... We're going to triple threat offline for him for those. Uh, and of course, he can just be in the squad when we are evoing up the Steve Kerr, the Mahmood, and the Cliff Robinson. So that's going to be it for today's video. Oh, and we're over 100k MT as well. So that is a nice place to leave it. So I hope this is going to help you guys out if you are struggling to evo him. Let's just take a quick look at his price, like I said, uh, down to the Amos level. And there are three up, and the cheapest is 93,000 MT. So... If you can get this guy done, it's definitely going to be worth it. It's going to be a nice payday when we get him done, but it's just about how long it's going to take uh, and how many missed shots I can cope with. But that is going to be it for today's video, guys. As usual, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.